welcome everybody. Um, it's XR Women Wednesday, and it's Wednesday, April 24th, our 168th event. Woo! Yay. So thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining and uh, super excited to host um, Celeste Lear today. And she's going to be sharing her infinite canvas. And I've known uh, Celeste for a couple of years. And I know Jenna and I were reminiscing on certain things that were ha that uh, Celeste has been a part of um, in the community. And it's uh, is so interesting and has so many different perspectives. So really excited to have her today and uh, have her share her work with all of you. And um, uh, let's get started. Uh, we'll get started with our, our slides. And uh, just before we begin, just to let everybody know that we are recording your avatar voice and text messages may be shared publicly. Please mute if you're not speaking and um, respect our speakers' opinions and presentations, which don't necessarily reflect those of XR women or leadership, but um, you know we are an open community where we're sharing our knowledge and, and understanding of, of spatial computing and the applications that they do have. So um, please use the raise hand to ask questions and our team will monitor that on the side. And um, don't forget to connect with others because that's the whole point of this is to grow our networks and collaborate together. Um, to help um, make the future better with all uh, all of the technologies that we're dealing with um, in our world. So um, I'm going to take uh, just a quick second. We haven't done this in a while. And um, if you're new to XR Women, if you can raise your hand, um, please take a moment, uh, a minute, because we're uh, we're all strict with time here. Uh, but take a minute to open up to the group. Um, tell us your name, uh, where you're joining from, what country, what location in the world, and what brought you here. So um, is anybody here that's new that would like to speak up and just share a little bit about themselves? Anyone here? I'm just looking down our list. Do I see anybody that is new? And if not, we'll move on. We just wanted to make sure that we had this um, space available for, for our community. Yeah, I think that there are some people who have come since we did this last time. This may not be their very first time, but I know there are some relatively new people here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to hear from Carla and from B and uh, yeah, any, anyone else? Speak up. Hi, I'm B uh, Capitan and I'm really grateful to be a part of this uh, gathering of amazing women. I'm really excited. Uh, I'm, wow, well, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm um, recently finished uh, last year getting my XR um, certificate in prototyping uh, and design from uh, circuit stream through UBC and I'm really in love with augmented reality and everything virtual um, and I'm excited about attending um, the tech retail in Vegas next month and thank you again for the uh, reach out for a um, discount so I could attend for free so I'm really excited about that and uh, I, I could go on but I just wanted to introduce myself and say thank you so much for having this I'm really grateful and I'm having problems switching my avatar but that's okay I, <laughs> I look a little different but anyway have a good one and I look forward to every, meeting other people here Thank you so much. That's so great. And so glad for you to join and take benefit of, um, you know, our community and reaching out, especially into the retail sector. Anybody who is going to um, to that event, and um, please reach out and make sure you connect so um, you can have that human connection while you're there as well. Um, thanks again for joining us. <laughs> is there anybody else? No? Okay, well, let's uh, let's keep going. And um, please, if, if you're too shy or you don't have audio, the chat function is there. Feel free to, um, you know, introduce yourself and um, you know, share with anybody uh, why you're here again and what brought you here. We're trying to make sure our programs reach as many people as possible and, and understanding why everybody attends is a huge part to our leadership team and, and creating the best content and, and, and learning for everybody every week, so. 
All right, let's keep going. Um, we'd like to thank our, our sponsor, uh, AMXRA, for, um, for sponsoring our, our weekly events. And um, just to mention to our community, uh, we are uh, looking to um, source out new sponsors for this year to help uh, keep our programs going and, and build a sustainable um, uh, support ecosystem for for all of you for our XR women community. Um, I made a post yesterday on LinkedIn where we're sitting at about 850 women globally over 60 countries and we're sitting at 168 events now. So, um, you know, we do have a place in this community and we want to grow it and support everybody who's a part of it. So um, if you have anybody or know anybody that's looking to um, support our community in this way, we'd love to, we'd love to host them. All right, so, um, yeah, uh, sorry, I missed that sponsorship slide, but um, I did talk about it. Just so you know, XR Women are everywhere. We have our museum, which you're all in here today, um, and the gallery, which uh, the visual here is from Trish Giannakis's gallery. And today we have the, um, the, the extreme pleasure to go and visit Celeste's gallery. So um, really excited to focus on showcasing the work of our community and, and how we can help them. Um, Last week, we were also in the research corner um, created by Sarah Barker, and that is live as well. You saw the button at the front of the entrance that you're welcome to go in there. And um, Sarah is leading the community um, around the research. Um, we also have Dong Ding Dinam Plaza, um, Man Plaza, sorry, in, uh, in Engage. Uh, well, we plan to be there next week for, for our next session. So um, we're grateful to Engage uh, for hosting that location there. And we also have our business showcase, which continues to be live and accessible to anybody looking to um, seek out the work of women-led um, companies uh, working in spatial computing. So uh, XR women are literally everywhere and uh, we will, we're not stopping anytime soon. So thanks for being on this journey with us. Um, we've got our t-shirts and our merch store open for everybody to get their XR Women shirts. We do have our new designs in there and ask everybody to support our community uh, by buying merch, whether it's uh, an apron for the kitchen, a coffee cup for your desk, a bag, um, a sweatshirt. Um, we'd like to have a lot of XR Women merch floating around AWE this year in June. So hopefully, um, so please uh, send out your, your support that way. All right, let's see if this goes forward. Um, XR Women in the Wild, that was a quick image, but my things, my Canva seems to be a little glitchy today. So let's keep going. Um, so we have our XR Women Awards at AWE in Long Beach, California, live June 17th to the 20th. Um, we will have our awards there. Um, we're excited to take the stage and um, uh, we are looking for our nominations towards the Real Impact World Impact Award, the Innovation Award, and the Trailblazer Award from our community and look forward to honoring uh, those three uh, women, whoever they may be. Please uh, enter your nominations. They do close May 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern. Keep going here. Um, just a quick uh, piece of news as I, as I try to keep everybody informed. This is... Um, uh, a map, um, man versus machine, on how quickly AI models are improving every year. And you'll see that the human baseline at 100% back in 2012, you know, AI was, um, you know, was already reaching over human baseline with image classification and, you know, towards medium level reading and comprehension and then visual reasoning has picked up as well in the past couple of years. But you can see how visual common sense, reasoning, multitask, language understanding and com competition, competition level mathematics are slowly creeping up and they will surpass that human baseline um, in all of these mediums. I, I will drop the link to this study. And um, if you don't follow Lauren Ingram, um, she is she hosts a podcast called Women of Web3. This was on her LinkedIn share this week. And um, she's uh, she provides a lot of interesting information about uh, blockchain and, and the utility applications that are out there and helping helping learn. So I actually listen to Lauren's podcast at least once or twice a week to stay in touch with, um, you know, what's going on with Web3 and how how everything comes together. So. All right, moving on. Next week, we have Nina Faye Lin. Um, 
speaking about breaking barriers, navigating the transition to a career in 3D design. And we're gonna host that and engage. So don't forget that we will be, um, you need to uh, RSVP that you will be attending um, and you need to do that in the Engage platform. Um, I'll also bring up just uh, one thing that we're trying to do as a leadership team to make the ease of access to our events um, much easier and you know, confirming communication. Um, there's a few different ways that we're, we are communicating out to our community and we know that there's, there's sometimes a lot of information coming back at us. So we're trying to, trying to mainstream the best way um, to help you understand where we are each week because we are changing around. As you know, we're in frame today and then next week we'll be engaged. So um, first of all, our, our promotions always say where we're going to be and that's um, sent out in posts, you know, right across LinkedIn, um, X, Twitter, and um, and also in our newsletters. Um, which, if you don't sign up for those, they are sent out on Tuesdays, so that you can, so you know where you're going the next day. And then we're also going to be taking a revisit to our our Slack channels, um, the Slack channels where we do most of our communication. If you are not in our Slack channel, um, maybe we'll, uh, when somebody from my team can just drop the invite in the chat for you. Under the general channel right now, we are we do post our events and we're starting to pin the event of the week so that it's easy to find and you can find this image and then go, okay, I know I'm going to engage this week. Um, we're also gonna be doing a little bit of an inventory on the Slack channels as well to make sure that the communication that we're sharing out is easily accessible. So stay tuned for a little bit of those updates. Um, we're just trying to make sure everybody knows where they're going every Wednesday and I'll be the first to admit that I sometimes do that. Where are we going today? I can't remember. So I'm trying to help everybody be on the same page and knowing exactly where to go. All right. So um, and then the following week, uh, Wednesday, May 8th, um, we're going to come back here and we're going to do an AWE uh, pregame. And um, we're going to take a look at the agenda and get ready to make the most of AWE for those that are going. Um, even if you are not attending in person, um, understanding the, you know, the talks that are out there and the agenda items will give you insight into the content once it does become live for you to go back and then learn about what you might have missed in person. So um, we're going to use May 8th to get ourselves ready for that. I'm going to pass it over to Jenna, who is going to be doing, um, who is going to be doing an introduction to Celeste today. Um, can we get a get Jenna back up here and then share with us how today is going to move forward? Thank you, Julie. Uh, great presentation. As always, there's a lot for us to learn here at XR Women. We've always got a lot of updates, a lot of really exciting things that we can talk about, and also ways to improve. So, um, uh, Robin, thank you for already giving us some, some good feedback. We love it. Um, well, thank you all for coming to the second ever opening of the XR Women Gallery uh, here in the XR Women Museum in Frame. Um, the goal of this gallery has always been to make this space match the mission of XR Women, um, part of which is to inspire members, visitors to the museum, and also our allies with what can be creatively possible in our field and showcase the creative talents of all of our members. Um, first of all, I would want to thank our previous artist, Trisha Janakis, for her amazing contributions and lovely gift of the XR Women unicorn. Um, I also want to call out, thank you, Wendy and Celeste, uh, for sharing your emojis. Emojis are a wonderful way to let the speaker know that you're listening, that you're giving feedback, and uh, it's very helpful. Um, so again, the XR Women Unicorn, up for present. It's like up in the XR Women Hall. Check it out, give it a look, take a selfie with it. It's beautiful. Um, and then I would love, I'm so, so excited to present and so grateful to present our next artist for this spring and summer, Celeste Lear, who is a virtual reality artist, performer, and immersive experience designer. Um, many of you already know that Celeste has been a devout member of XR Women since, was it 2021? Um, she DJed our first XR Women online party. She DJed our two year anniversary party that was in person up in New York. And she's a great tribe member. Um, she's super active in so many meetings and she always gives awesome feedback and uh, you know, awesome kudos to all the members here. 
Um, my favorite thing about Celeste, I will say, after you know meeting with her for the past month and a half, and also just knowing her for these past few years, is how fearless she is in exploring her new mediums and tools and ways to create. Um, I love just meeting with Celeste and hearing, uh, and I'm gonna put my, my megaphone on now. Anyways, I love when I get to meet with Celeste and I'm like, hey Celeste, we're actually gonna work with this. And she goes, cool, all right, we'll figure it out. We're gonna make it work. And um, I think that's just such an awesome attitude to have with these great, with these new mediums and the ones that again, are constantly changing in our field. Um, also, did you hear that she will be DJing the opening party for the 2024 AWE Festival? Uh, we're all in for a treat. Um, Celeste, I'm gonna do a quick call out. You can say it again if you'd like. Uh, but if anybody here has music from their own world or their own VR, XR, AR, MR experiences that they've created, and they want her to include their music in her set, reach out to her here, reach out to her on LinkedIn, find some way to contact her. I don't know, smoke signals. Um, I bet that you might be able to get that included. Um, and so now to talk about this new exhibit, which is Infinite Canvas. Um, Infinite Canvas, again, by Celeste. It showcases her wide ranging and unique 3D sculptures designed using tilt brush, we love tilt brush. And then it's incorporated and animated into various concerts, performances, and virtual social gathering spots from 2019 until today. These imaginative metaverse events inspired by fantasy, science fiction, they help to lend the collective re redefinition of the boundaries of digital art, the social experience of music and sound, gamification, and live performance using spatial technology. Um, and with that being said, I would love to introduce to the stage Celeste Lear. And if we can give some hand emojis, dance emojis, woohoo! Thanks for the props, Gina. Um, ah, okay. Well, hello, everybody, and good morning from Los Angeles. I uh, just want to take a moment and thank you all for coming to my very first VR art opening. I'm calling Infinite Canvas. And I would, of course, like to express my gratitude to XR Women for the opportunity to display my art here at the gallery and to give this short presentation, and also for their vision and perseverance to advance women in immersive tech. Super honored to be here. Um, I've been working on what I want to say today, like a deeper purpose mission statement. And I, when I take a moment and reflect on like my my greater life purpose and drive, I have this reoccurring theme, like a personal theme that it's my goal to bring beauty into the world and to help bring people together to experience the good things in life. Um, artists really seem to have this, to experience this innate drive to create. We love to come up with unique ways to immerse our viewers and listeners in our visions and sounds and souls. Um, the arts really bind us together and give everyone around us essential inspiration uh, and fuel to continue and expand our own work, whatever it may be, even if it's more scientific or technical, like the arts are. My analogy is that music and art are, are like humanity is figurehead at the front of the ship, guiding us forward and inspiring us with beauty and hope for a better future. Um, so for anyone that's coming in that doesn't know me, my name is Celeste Lear and I'm an LA based VR artist. Uh, I work as an um, immersive event and concert producer and XR experience designer. Uh, many of you also know my work as a music director, composer, and DJ, uh, working many like decades now, really, in the entertainment, nightlife, and audio um, production composition world. And yeah, the art show I'm unveiling today, I titled Infinite Canvas. And this, to me, represents um, unbridled possibilities, personal and collective artistic evolution, storytelling squared and the next iteration of the fusion between organic and synthetic in the arts. The art in the gallery is for sale and uh, it's available as NFTs also. Um, you can click 
the pieces to get that information. Um, I was only able to fit a select few of the sculptures I have created um, using tilt brush in this gallery due to um, size spaces, but I also have some pieces that are up on Sketchfab and um, I'll link to those. There's also music that I have composed attached to some of the pieces that you can listen to. That's also um, some of those pieces are available on all streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music. Let me click the next video here. So a quick origin story. I was introduced to virtual reality on a Vive. Sorry, it was a Oculus Rift in 2018. And the very first program that I actually ever tried in VR was Tilt Brush. And I instantly fell in love with it. And the minute I put it on, my reaction was, I thought this is really a next level tool for creativity. And um, I ended up purchasing gear in early 2019, um, including a, a gamer PC as I was, um, when, you, when you're in sound engineering, um, you typically always learn on a Mac. And so I really had to discipline myself and push forward to learn how to use a PC. And that I'm still learning. That, that was a tricky switch over. So I, am, <laughs> I use a Mac and a PC for a lot of this work. And I leaned heavily into VR during the pandemic. So a lot of you might have been in this world during that time. And if anyone was, was also involved in the social scene, you know, it was a real lifesaver because um, the isolation was intense. I went through a divorce at that time and it was really hard. And the um, VR was a saving grace. The communities that I've made really strong lasting friendships and was able to dive into this art and production. Uh, some of the visuals, some of the video that you're seeing is actually from Second Life. Um, that was one of the first communities that I joined. And they were incredib incredibly helpful in, in um, coaching me on how to bring my art into the platform to build and design in there and how to um, change the file types and understand. It was just a really, really supportive community to be a part of and a testament of how these digital cultures can still be strong, supportive, and um, uplifting. So since I had worked as a DJ for um, many years, I was excited to continue my exploration of performance in virtual reality on stages that I was able to design. And to be honest, the stage design kind of started as a joke. When I was in Tilt Brush, I, I was like, oh, you know, if I was superstar famous DJ and I had all the money in the world and like a production team behind me to design my fantasy stages, like the kind you see at these world-class music <laughs> festivals. I was like, this is kind of what I want it to look like, like these giant butterfly wings shooting lasers out of the sides. Like <laughs> I just kind of let my imagination run rampant. And I didn't actually think that I would be using these to perform. <laughs> And so when it started happening, it was actually really fun and it was such a treat. And it was such, um, I say when, you know, when you're in virtual reality, you just kind of have to open your mind, be imaginative and, um, and kind of let go and dive in to um, suspend your preconceived notions of what, you know, socializing and dance dance and concerts can look like. Um, if anyone went to the Fat Boy Slim concert and engage, you know, um, the, the creative possibilities for, for immersive design for music videos and concerts um, and gamification is just incredible. So it was such a treat working with the Second Life community and making these concerts happen. The other platform that I was heavily involved in was Wave, it was Wave XR. And I'm gonna switch video screens so I can show you. Um, just curious if anyone here was in Wave. That's a big yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Um, anyone else here got to experience WAVE before they shut down? Just curious. So WAVE XR was yeah. a, yeah, okay. So WAVE XR was a platform. Um, it was incredibly, it was some of the best tools that I've seen for music concert and live performance production. The vision, I believe it was Adam Arrigo. He was the founder. When I went into that platform, I was so blown away at the creative possibilities and the tools that they were giving um, creators for content um, presets and also the ability to import in digital objects through Google Poly. So it was a really cool platform um, that was very well thought out in terms of what the artists and the creators could use, but there was a fatal flaw. <laughs> and it, unfortunately, this platform had to sunset, had to close down due to the fact that Google Poly was where a lot of our art was coming from to build our worlds. And when Google Poly went out of business, it took hundreds of artists, uh, years and years of work with it. And so very similar to what happened in alt space, we lost a treasure trove of creation in there. It was just um, really a, a time of mourning for a lot of the artists. I spent eight months building and creating these um, virtual nightclub and gamified social and dance experiences and everything was deleted. Um, but I wanna, I, um, I'm very good about video documenting um, how this all works and um, I, cause I've loved to share with the community um, the process and the people behind this technology and what it's like to go inside. And also just for anyone that's moving into the development world or dreaming up how to um, further design platforms, I think that Wave XR was an excellent, excellent example um, of how to create these really incredible experiences. So this was one of my favorite parts and it, it, the process was called God mode in the game <laughs> because you got to you, they gave you this um ability to look at the world as a mini model and so the little this is like my nightclub actually that's floating through a tunnel so the collider where the where the avatars are kind of um based for the sense of gravity is is you get to see it going through this tunnel and you get to um toggle back and forth between the miniature and the master view and that was an incredible way to create um it was so fun i during this time i my husband at the time complained that he he didn't see me for like a whole year i disappeared into vr i don't know if that's happened to any of you <laughs> um but creating tunnel effects and um infinite scrolling tunnels and particle effects was really fun and then these shows i was also able to work with a vj uh the the platform gave tools to both DJ music using little records that you could put on turntables that um, they licensed music from different labels, or you could broadcast your own music from your, you know, my recording studio, which is what I opted to do more often than not. The VJ got his own mixing board also. So when I worked with a, D a VJ, I created a perch for him. So I had to design my world so the VJ would have a special perch where he got a bird's eye view of what was going on and could control the speed of the tunnels, um, the lighting effects. Uh, we would go, I would build scene to scene so you were able to create in, in terms of which scenes you were gonna start and, and go cycle through and then end. And that was also an incredible way to design a platform for experience. So I would tell, I would have team meeting with my VJ, give him like written notes. Okay, we're gonna spend five minutes on scene one, 10 minutes on scene two, and then turn up, turn down the lighting on scene three for a nighttime effect. Um, it's just incredible. And I also was um, very, very grateful to have the talent of Carlos Austin and his team. And he's here today. I want to give him lots of credit because a lot of this work, um, the visuals were 
the, the videography and live broadcast was handled by his team. When we were working, we had a Discord channel going for team communications, which was also a great way for us to stay in touch. But it was also a tremendously mind numbing amount of technology that we are using all at the same time. <laughs> it was like it was I felt like a crazy mad scientist with all these computers open, a Mac and a PC, my VR headset on, DJing, and you know, creating these worlds, working with the full production team. It was seriously like some of the hardest, most challenging work that I've ever done, <laughs> but very rewarding. <laughs> Although not a lot of people got to see it because the technology is still so experimental and um, you have to have a gamer PC to come in to wave XR, but it's it's just a testament of what can be done and and how world building, um, sorry, and platform design can and should be done in the future. So anyway, um, I just wanted to show a little bit of, about this. I don't want to um, talk too much because I really do want everyone to be able to uh, go into the gallery and and look around and socialize and spend some time. Um, um, enjoying the art and again i'm really just thrilled to be a part of this community i've i find all of your work so inspirational i'm really enjoying getting to know every everybody more and again um i am going to be the official dj for the welcome party at awe which i'm very honored and if any of you or have music or know people that have some kick-ass music for your games um, any XR related project, you can send it to me if I have time, I want to remix it. And I want to really be representing the community at AWE so for the music and sound aside. <laughs> so feel free to send that to me. And um, I'm just gonna stop there. So thank you so much for hearing me out and for coming to Infinite Canvas. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Celeste. Um, well, Celeste, would you like to lead us into your your gallery space? Sure, follow me. Woohoo! Oh, let me let me turn this video screen off though. <laughs> <laughs> All my meditation videos up there. <laughs> Perfect. And I will say, everybody, uh, if you are not in the gallery space, you will not be able to hear Celeste talk. Um, it is a private voice zone, so if you want to join the rest of the conversation, please. Uh, Get up and WASD. Hi, Celeste. Hi, Jenny. It's Trish. <laughs> oh, sorry. I saw Jenny in front of me. This is Hi. really amazing. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, I love your glasses. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to thank see you. Me. Thank you for paving the way. <laughs> oh, of course. I, That's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so good Hi, to Wendy. meet you and see you. Wow. I'm going to be at AWE, too. Awesome. Um, yay. So, yay, yay, yay. So maybe we can catch up and see if I can... Um, collaborate with you want to oh, yeah we should we're gonna have like an official xr women meet up at awe right oh no oh i'd love that hoot hoot and the pre i'm going for the first time this year yay yeah, we're working on that, Celeste. Um, obviously, uh, opening night with you is kind of the first the first part of it, and then we have our award ceremony as well. So, what day um, is the award ceremony? Yeah, and there's a lot of other things kind of happening. The XR Guild is also hosting a party too. So we're very conscious not to split up everybody into another party if there's already a party going on. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So stay. We'll um, we'll make sure that everybody knows where everybody is going to be during that week, for sure. Stick together. <laughs> Celeste, I'm digging the boom cubed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really awesome. The boom cube. Yeah, that one's pretty fun. There's um there's some music, but I think I I thought when I put the music in here, I thought it was going to be only played per, 
per avatar individually, but I think we had a, an issue earlier where it, someone hit the button, it was played for the entire group. So if the music starts for everybody, hopefully it would just be the one song and not multiple tracks at the same time. But the music's all, I've, I've composed it in my recording studio and, and mixed and engineered this music also. Oh, so there is music in here. Oh, there okay. Is, yeah. I don't hear any. Okay, good uh, to know. We, to know. I'll do we want to try and play a track? Oh, there's your player. I see it. Okay. Um, I see the player, but it's not, um, I'm not hearing it for some reason. Hmm. Okay, I wonder what's going on. Do you guys hear it now? Yeah, we're good. Well, I'm good. Awesome. I can hear it. I can hear Winter's Passery. No, I can hear it. but I, I consider myself a visual artist. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Celeste, I didn't know you were a part of the, um, the Act Now project. Yeah, it was actually, the Act Now is a great story because it was, I've been a part of a team that has been selected as an official arts partner of the United Nations and we've worked together on these really incredible high-tech multimedia installations throughout the years for the UN, including an AR installation for the World Food Program. And we commemorated UNESCO's 70th year anniversary in Paris with um, a full team and an architectural video mapping experience on the side of UNESCO's headquarters. But during the pandemic, we had all these projects that we were planning on doing that we couldn't do. And I suggested that we move it into the metaverse and that we produce everything in VR and we designed a deck to present to the United Nations and they really loved it. I took them on a tour in, in, in a Zoom call through Altspace and they absolutely loved it. So we got permission from them to do Act Now VR and um, we had two flagship 24 hour um, kind of digital twin experiences that we created with Cause and Christy and Chris Crisatelli from Dreamland XR on MetaCities and a whole slew of artists, artistic partners. And we're working to keep this project and vision going right now because we're fundraising, but we really want to get Act Now XR. It's back off, back off the ground. Um, our director is actually at the EarthX conference this week, um, networking. And Has anyone ever been to EarthX? No, but I'm very aware of it because what? of uh, my my climate storytelling project. What is it? I can't wait to hear more about it. Oh, Earth X. Um, let's see, actually, not exactly. I've never been before. That's I haven't world, been before. Dallas. The largest green gathering held annually around Earth Day in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Nonprofit organization. Yeah, I'm hoping to connect with them for next year for Metamorphosis. So. By the way, Jenny and I are practically neighbors. She lives really close to me <laughs> in here in Los Angeles. You know, we need to get get together again. 
So Celeste, what is, um, can you talk about this, uh, this sort of featured piece right here, the one with the forest cipher and the, the leaves and the trees? Sure. So this one was just kind of a stream of consciousness piece. It's, um, I really like the, the concept of flow state or getting into the zone where you, you just focus on like the, the art as a meditation. And it was one of the pieces that I was the most in the flow state when I was creating. And I would also say a lot of the inspiration behind my designs comes from the natural world. And I want to honor and create This piece is maybe just my homage to the forest and the cipher is a term for like a digital code. And I think that nature, the natural world has this mathematic, this, these, this mathematics behind these intense mathematics behind behind it and like how um, geometry comes into play. And when you zoom into nature, the systems behind it, how incredibly ornate and also mathematical they are. So it's like the juxtaposition of na nature and, and technology. Um, and then I like that the branches are kind of floating up towards the sky, the heavens. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to describe that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I guess when I look at it, I get this big sense of both micro and macro. Like, it's like either I'm zooming in really, really close or I'm so far removed from um, from these organic shapes that, uh, that, yeah, they become mathematical, that they become very much about just simple geometries. Yeah, it's funny because I, I'm... I'm such a nature fanatic. I spend a lot of my extra time out in the wilderness whenever I can, but I'm also in virtual reality, which is the complete antithesis. It's kind of ironic um, that I have such a love and appreciation for both. <laughs> it's beautiful, Celeste. Thank you. There's, there's another piece of music that, tell me if everyone, yeah. Yeah, okay. wow. so this, this is called Al Kabuska, and it's a joint release. Um, my, one of my best friends is the flautist, the vocalist, and we created together.
call that um, goddess rock. <laughs> Just for the record, it was very, um, uh, I don't know, it was like um, very melodic in my brain. It just kind of relaxed me there for a minute. So thank yeah, you. So much. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's that's <laughs> I was that's totally in tune with it. <laughs> it's, it's, that song was created as a bass track. So you actually have to have really good speakers or headphones to appreciate the, um, the impact of the bass of that song because there's a lot of sub bass programming in it. So if you're just like listening on a speaker of, on your um, computer, you won't get the full impact of, of the song. But um, yeah, it was- I really cool. enjoy your music. And yeah. I've told you this before that I think your dreamy and chill track, I have kind of <laughs> in the last couple of weeks gone to bed and listened to it before I sleep. And um, you're, yeah, you're part of my daily routine right, right now. Thank you. Yeah, that playlist is so special. In fact, I'd love to share it with everyone. This is great background music. It's good early yeah. morning or late night music. Yeah, very relaxing. It's very centering. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, here, let me share it because this one is some real soul inspiration. Yeah, it's my absolute. It's my absolute favorite. So, okay. Okay. I'm so happy. That one's also good bedroom music. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it really, it just centers my brain every time I listen to it. And no matter if I listen to it right from the beginning or if I listen to it in the beginning, in the middle to the end or whatever, it's, uh, yeah, I can vouch for that one. <laughs> I just shared it in the chat. Yeah, so. thank you. Well, thank you everybody for coming. I'm so happy to have this art in here for a couple of months. And yeah, what's everyone else up to today? Any, anything exciting? I'm trying, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's all exciting, huh? It's Wednesday and back to work for, for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Celeste, for, for having your artwork in here. We're excited to make this part of our weekly events and um, spread the news about all the, the amazing work that you've done. So thank you, really appreciate you offering as you know, this gift to our community, um, which is so inspiring. Thank you. You guys wanna do a group shot? Yes. Always, always Carlos, where yes, are you? Yes. I'm right behind you. We could do it with a tree in the background. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. Yeah, let's get one before everybody takes off. Cause cool. I know. Thanks, Carlos. Thank you so Feel much. Good to direct us. You're welcome. Oh, Robin, are you there, Roberta? <laughs> How come Roberta gets to be a floating head? I think and she's I in VR. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. Oh. Oh, um, maybe something with my um, Ready Player Me avatar. I don't wow. Know. Yeah, it might be an avatar setting. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, here we I go. You're out of face forward, but sorry. All right, then we're going. Trying to flood the flood the screens with emojis here. <laughs> okay, one more. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Yeah, I'll put it on next. Mwah.